Hey, what's up, YouTubers, and welcome back to another Toddy Walnuts update video. I'm joined again by the beautiful ladies, Miss Hannah on the right, Miss Heidi on the left. I got a couple of candles burning. We're in chill mode here at the Walnuts compound. I have a couple of stacks of goodies here to show you guys today. So these first, I guess these first two piles are going to be some Blue Underground blue, uh, DVD pickups that I got recently over the last couple of weeks. I got a stack here of um, Giallo films and I have a couple of DVD franchises that I picked up, a um, couple of uh, miscellaneous piles here in the middle. And I'm going to talk today about um, my 10,000 subscriber contest giveaway. We're going to talk a little bit about that. And I also have seven DVDs that I'm going to be giving away in this video, or you can, you'll be able to hear in this video how you can win these, these movies. So stick around and let's just jump into it. There's no singing today. There's no BS. It's just going to, we're going to jump right into it. We're going to talk about some good movies. So kick your feet up, get relaxed, get a snack, get a beverage, and let's check out these movies. So let's start with this first pile here. We're just going to kind of pull randomly from this pile of Blue Underground DVDs I've been picking up. Okay, we got to get comfortable here. So any day now. Okay, you're all good? Everything's good? All right, let's continue. So the first one I picked up is it's an Italian slasher movie called Torso. This is the uncensored English version. The one with the yellow cover is the, I believe it's 90 minutes running time. And there's also a, I believe it's the European cut of this movie that Blue Underground put out. It's four minutes longer and it comes with a red cover. So um, I did order that, it will be coming It'll, you'll see that one in my next update video which will be probably three weeks or a month from now but i just wanted you to be aware that there are two different editions of this by blue underground the yellow cover is 90 minutes and the red cover is uh, four minutes longer so it's 94 minutes so hold on a second here i'm gonna move some things around the next one i picked up is a movie called delirium Starring Mickey Haggerty, and he was the husband of Jane Mansfield um, and his daughter. I believe her name is Mariska or something like that. I think she played in one of the um, detective TV shows. Um, I can't remember the name of it. It's one of the, it's not NYPD Blue, but it's something like that. I, I forget what it was, but. So this has two different versions of the movie. You get the uncut, uncensored international version and the alternate American version. So the international version of this movie is 180, or I'm sorry, 102 minutes. And the American version is 86 minutes. So that's a, it's quite a uh, substantial amount of cutting that the U.S. did to this movie. So you can actually watch it. Um, the way it was meant to be, you know, uncensored, uncut. And if you ever have the uncensored, uncut version of the movie, why wouldn't you watch that one, right? So um, I'm looking forward to checking that out. That is Delirium. Wonderfully sick and demented. Psychosexual perversity. The next one is Dario Argento's Inferno. I own this movie many different times. I just wanted to grab this DVD. So here we go again. I mean, she's a big girl, and when she moves around, the whole bed starts shaking. So I gotta kind of wait till she's settled. Um, 
I, I had a lot of these movies on DVD way back in the day. So this was released in, the movie came out in 1980, but this DVD was released in 2007. Um, I think I traded in some DVDs early on in my collecting days when I started to upgrade to Blu-ray. So I'm starting to get some of those back. But some of these I never did own in the first place. So I'm just kind of filling in holes for my DVD collection. And I have a, a sneaking suspicion that within these next 10 years that DVDs are going to be worth... A ton of money this is just the way that I'm feeling about it um, just because it's it's an older out-of-date media now and you know they're not making DVDs anymore and up until recently they were still making like blu-ray DVD combos but we're not getting those anymore and nowadays it's mostly you know 4k and blu-ray combos a lot of stores aren't carrying DVDs anymore companies aren't producing DVDs anymore and there's still a very collectible media. And I just have this feeling that these are going to be worth a ton of money coming up here in the, uh, in the near future. So I'm kind of picking these up now while they're, they're pretty cheap. You know, you can get a lot of these DVDs for under 10 bucks a piece. Uh, next one is Snuff. And you may remember in the last update video that I had, I had a, a different edition of Snuff. I'll pull that out and we'll put it side by side. But this one is the more limited numbered edition of the movie. Uh, it doesn't look that good. It has kind of that brown paper bag meant to look like it's a, a bootleg of a, uh, a film that shouldn't be viewed. You know, a, a snuff movie is a movie where actors are supposed to be actually murdered in the movies. I don't know what it was limited to, but I got number 5,976. So, I mean, this is just kind of a gimmicky cover. I don't really care much for this cover, but being that it's a collectible numbered unit, I wanted to grab it. I'm going to pause it here really quick and pull out the other edition and kind of show them side by side. So here they are side by side. And uh, like I said, you may remember this one from the last update video a few weeks ago. I actually, I kind of like that cover on the right. It's uh, It's very simple. A very simplistic cover but I, I think it's effective and I like it uh, the one on the left it, it's gimmicky and it's just made to look like it's uh, this forbidden tape that was smuggled and trying to be hidden I don't know it just uh, it, 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 I'm glad to have it don't get me wrong it's a numbered edition but uh, you know as far as packaging it doesn't look that great to me okay so the next one here is some more Italian slasher goodness giallo movie called short night of glass dolls and it's a great cover it's a great title too a sensational example of the genre so this movie came out in 1971 and it was released on dvd in 2008 and this is the unrated edition of it and it's another one of the movies where they have to track a killer. A killer who hides in shadows, wears gloves and dark outfits. And they always leave, you know, red herrings. And they try to throw you off on your trail as you're watching the movie, trying to figure out who the killer is. And, you know, they try to leave breadcrumbs and then they try to lead you astray a little bit. And then they kind of bring you back and they try to play mind games with you. I love these kind of movies, though. They're great. And the next one is called The Black Belly of the Tarantula. Another great title. And this one also came out in 1971. You can watch it with English audio or original Italian auto, audio. Another deranged killer killing beautiful women. And uh, if you guys uh, enjoy this genre, I'm sure you would like this movie. Italian cinema is, is great to me. It's probably some of the best movie watching I've ever watched. Some of the stuff the Italians put out. And here's another same type of movie called Who Saw Her Die? This one stars a, a former James Bond actor, George Lazenby. And 
This movie came out in 1972, and uh, Blue Underground released it in 2008. 94 minutes running time. The next one is called Macabre, or Macabre, however you decide to pronounce that. You're not wrong. Uh, this is a, a film by Lamberto Bava, who was the son of Mario Bava. Another slasher film. And this one came out in 1980, and Blue Underground released it in 2007. You get a little bit of extras here. Yeah, it looks like you get an interview with the co-writer and director, Lamberto Bava. You also get a trailer and a Bava bio. This movie was also known as Frozen Terror. And of course, we know that uh, Lamberto Bava directed Demons, Demons 2, and A Blade in the Dark. And A Blade in the Dark is a movie you will have a chance to win if you stick around. I'm gonna talk about that a little bit later. Some good stuff coming up at the end, so I would I would encourage you to stick around if you want a chance to win some free stuff, that is. So here is Mario Bava in shock. And this is Mario Bava, the dad, the grandfather of Italian horror. And this one stars Daria Nicolodi. Uh, this movie came out in 1977, and Blue Underground released it in... 2007. It is unrated. It's in widescreen and it's 92 minutes running time. Mario Baba had some great movies back in the day. I, he, he was the godfather of, of horror movies, Italian movies. Uh, I believe there wouldn't be a Friday the 13th if it wasn't for Mario Bava. Um, I, I really believe that Friday the 13th kind of borrowed from the mind of Bava, uh, especially uh, Twitch of the Death Nerve. Uh, very, very similar, and I can see how people were inspired by, you know, come up with ideas from that movie. I'm not saying they were blatantly ripping him off, I'm just saying that it was kind of uh, inspired, you know. And speaking of A Blade in the Dark, here it is. You'll have a chance to win this one and six others. There's going to be seven total DVDs given away in one contest. This is another Bava movie called A Blade in the Dark. And this one came out in 1983. And Blue Underground released it in 2007. And has a pretty cool tagline here at the top. I thought it was pretty, pretty fun. It says, when the lights go out. The knife goes in. It stars uh, the guy who starred in the New York Ripper, uh, Andrea Ochenpinti. Um, I, I, that's what I'm going to go with. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Hey, I'm making a movie over here. I, yeah, I don't know how to pronounce it. So. All I know is he was the, the main actor in The New York Ripper, which I, I love that movie. It was a great movie. And it says here it's essential, essential viewing for Italian horror fans. It's a shame they don't make them like this anymore. That's a great cover, too. The next one is called The Toolbox Murders. This is the original. This has since been remade, and there's actually been a, a sequel to the remake. This is the original starring Cameron Mitchell. It's a great cover. Kind of has that throwback feel to it. There's Cameron Mitchell right there. Looks a little bit like Dean Martin, if you ask me, but this movie came out in 1977. Unrated, 94 minutes running time. And this was a 2002 release by Blue Underground. This one's pretty good. I like
like this one. This is a pretty good movie. And the last one for this pile is called Venom. It's got a pretty good cast for, you know, a B horror movie. So you have uh, St Sterling Hayden, who was in a ton of stuff. Uh, he was in the he was in the Godfather. He was kind of that crooked police commissioner. You have Klaus Kinski. You have Susan George. You got Oliver Reed, who's one, probably one of the finest actors ever um, to play in a movie like this. Here's Oliver Reed right there. He's definitely one of my favorites. I mean, he was a very weird man in real life. He had he had a lot of demons that he was fighting in real life. Um, mainly his alcoholism, and that's what ended up killing him. But he was a, a great actor. And this is a movie from 1982, 92 minutes running time. And Blue Underground released this one in 2003. You don't get too many bonus features, but you still get a couple. And this is how it was back in the day when, when DVD first came out. Um, you know, you sometimes on movies like this, they didn't have a lot of extras to give you. Now we're so lucky with companies like Arrow Video or Criterion or uh, Scream Factory where they can dig up so many uh, bonus features to, to pack in these collector's editions and they even find new stuff and they have new interviews and they keep the, the genre alive. They keep physical media alive. So that's the end of pile one. I'm going to pause it here and get something to drink, wet my old whistle, and then we're going to plow on to pile two. Okay, so we're making pretty good time. We'll just keep moving on here. I have Violent City starring another great actor, one of the classic Hollywood tough guys, and they don't make actors like this anymore. I feel so lucky and so blessed that I was able to grow up watching movies from the 70s and the 80s with tough guy actors like Bronson Eastwood, Stallone, Schwarzenegger, guys like that. Um, they, we don't really have actors like that these days anymore and it's a shame really but we can still live you know these decades by watching physical media. So this is Violent City uh, of course, Charles Bronson's in it, and his wife, Jill Ireland, is also in it. Telly Savalas. There's Bronson and his wife, and I know a lot of people complained. They didn't think that she needed to be in so many of his movies. He was a very protective... He, he was kind of a jerk in real life. Um, he was a little bit insecure. He always wanted her around, and they did a lot of movies together. He, had, he actually stole hit that girl from... One of his buddies in a, in a movie, um, I believe it was during the shooting of Dirty Dozen. Um, I saw a documentary one time. It was an interview in a documentary. Um, I, I can't remember the actor's name. It was a British guy. And he was, he was either dating or married to Jill Ireland. And Bronson told him, went up right to him and told him, one of these days, your wife is going to be my wife. And that's exactly what happened. And uh, he was kind of a jerk as a person, but he was a great actor. And this movie came out, let's see if I can find a year, 1970. And it's unrated. And you can actually watch this in English, Italian, or French. This is a good one, though. I, I like these um, these action, tough guy movies. This is definitely a good one. Violent City. The next one I have not watched yet. I, I don't even I didn't even know this one existed. This is an Italian movie in Italian language only. It's called La Scorta, which means the escort. And it's about a group of guys here that. They're protecting a, I believe they're protecting cops from the Italian mafia during a trial. So the, this group of men here, I believe it's, what is it, five or six guys there. They, I, I don't know if this is based on a true story, but it takes place in Sicily in 1992. 
And there's a, it says there's a high profile judge and his bodyguard are brutally murdered and four reluctant young cops are assigned as La Scorta, Italian for the escorts, to protect the replacement prosecutor from mafia assassins. Um, I read reviews about this and it sounds like it's really, really good, but you have to watch it in, unless you know Italian, you have to watch it with English subtitles. So this was released in 2006 by Blue Underground. The movie is from 1993. It is unrated, 95 minutes running time. But it sounds really good, and, you know, I, I love Italian crime and Italian horror. So I'm sure I'm going to really enjoy that one, too. The next one is another one of my favorite actors of all time, and this is How to Kill a Judge. What a title. Um, starring Franco Nero. The Franco Nero, and as far as I'm concerned, the only Django. He's the only Django, the one and only, the best, the greatest. Franco Nero is great. Um, this one came out in 1974. It's 111 minutes running time, so it's pretty long, and it's unrated. And Blue Underground released this one in 2006. So I'm very much looking forward to I'll, Eventually, I would like to get every movie that that Nero made, if not everyone, because I know he did some kind of drama stuff too, and I'm not really into the romance and the drama stuff, but he did a ton of action and westerns and stuff like that. I'm going to try to grab as much of that stuff as I can. The next one is called The Heroin Busters, another title for you there. Film directed by the great Enzo G. Castellari, starring Fabio Testi. He was, Fabio Testi was in a lot of different, um, westerns and, and Italian genre films too. He was a great actor. And this is another action movie here. This movie came out in 1977 and it was released by Blue Underground in 2006. 93 minutes running time. You may remember Fabio Testi from The Big Racket, Contraband and some others. David Hemmings is also in here. He played in Deep Red, which is a great movie. Um... Let's see, Sherry Buchanan played in Zombie Holocaust. Uh, has a soundtrack by Goblin, which was uh, used by Dario Argento quite a bit. It was actually kind of co-founded by Argento, um, but they always, uh, they always have great music soundtracks in these movies. Next one is another Franco Nero. This one is a great movie, this is excellent has Franco Nero and Barbara Bach, and I had always had a huge crush on Barbara Bach. It's another Enzo G. Castellari movie called Street Law. There's Nero again. What a great cover. There's Barbara Bach. She was a Bond girl in the early days of the James Bond movies. There's Nero. He was always a great, solid, tough guy actor. Really loved Franco Nero. Um... This is a movie from 1974, unrated, and it came out in 2006 on DVD. Barbara Bach was also in Black Belly of the Tarantula. I forgot to mention that earlier. And so Castellari was great. So that is uh, Street Law. Most of these have Blu-ray releases, which I do have upgraded to Blu-ray by now. These are just the DVDs. So sometimes I'm kind of going backward, trying to pick up some of the uh, the backward media. So next one's called Revolver. And this one has Oliver Reed, Fabio Testi again. Another action movie. Another excellent movie. Yeah, these guys were great together. And I, like I said before, I really love Oliver Reed. I think he's amazing. He has a soundtrack by Ennio Morricone, who is the maestro, the best to ever do it. This movie came out in 1973 and uh, was released by Blue Underground in 2004. So Oliver Reed plays a, p a prison warden and his wife gets captured by a prison gang. Is that what it is? A pr uh, kidnappers. And they demand the release of their inmate, who is played by Fabio Testi, as their ransom to get his wife back. 
That sounds pretty, pretty freaking amazing if you ask me. That sounds like a good one. And the next one is called The Big Racket, another Enzo Castellari movie. This one also stars Fabio Testi and Vincent Gardenia. This movie came out in 1976 and was released on DVD in 2006. So I guess this is kind of like the 30 year anniversary edition. Re I really love these old school crime action movies like this. You see the, the clothing and you see the vehicles and it's like a, these movies are like little time capsules that you can go back and visit. So for this, how long was this movie? So for 106 minutes, you can actually go back to 1976 and hang out for a while. That's the way I feel about it. These are like little time capsules. And then here is a, a film, film by Fulci called Contraband. And this one came out in 1980. It was released on DVD by uh, in 2004. I have this movie a couple of different times already. You may remember the Shameless Entertainment had a lenticular cover on their, I think it was a Blu-ray. And when you you kind of uh, flick the the lenticular and you can see that that bullet go through the back of that guy's head and you can kind of see the splatter of it. And this one's uncut and uncensored, so it's pretty it's pretty violent. This movie in another Fabio Testi movie, so you can't go wrong if you ask me. Uh, Ninety seven minutes, if I didn't mention that already. And uh, Marcel Bozuffi <laughs> co-stars in here. He was in the French Connection. I don't even know why I bother trying to pronounce these names because I'm sure I'm making a, a heel out of myself. But So that was my uh, little pile or little uh, additions to my Blue Underground collection. I still have more to get. And I'm, I'm picking these up now while they're cheap because I'm, I'm telling you, I just have this feeling that these, these movies here are going to be worth their weight in gold in the next 10 years or less. I just have that feeling. And before I start to put this stuff away and move on to this pile, I just want to mention that uh, I picked up quite a few of these movies from a seller on Mercari. He went by the seller name of the Illuminous Eye. And... I, I don't remember exactly what I bought from him or, um, or I, I don't remember the details, but I did buy some nice things from him. He gave me a good deal and he threw in this little documentary, which I'm very happy about. I'm, I'm very thrilled that he was, he thought enough of me to include this as a freebie. And, uh, I made sure to thank him, of course. And, uh, we keep in touch now through, um, uh, Mercari and, uh, you know, I'll link his, his channel down below in case you guys are interested. He does have a, a lot of uh, music, like music, uh, like black metal, heavy metal stuff, uh, stuff that I'm not really into, but I'm, maybe some of you guys are. And it looks like he had some really cool stuff on there. Um, but he also did have some more movies and stuff. So if you want to check his channel out, I'll link it down below. Uh, and this is the the documentary that he gave to me for free. Uh, it's called Eurocrime, the Italian cop and gangster films that ruled the 1970s. It's a feature length documentary. You can see all the big names up here that are included in interviews and such. You got Franco Nero, John Saxon, Henry Silva, Antonio Sabato, Fred the Hammer Williamson, Luke Miranda, uh, and more. I mean, and this is just, it looks, it's right up my alley. So, this this uh, documentary, I almost called it a movie, it's over two hours long, 127 minutes, and it came out in 2014. You can see Henry Silva. You see Fred the Hammer, and you can see John Saxon. And uh, I just, I I love this era of movies, and so I'm, I'm very much looking forward to this. 
and uh, I, I recommend it. I haven't watched this yet, but I, I recommend this kind of stuff. If you like the movies that I'm showing you here, you'll definitely like this as kind of a companion piece to these movies. So I'm going to pause it here, put some things away a little bit, and we'll continue on with uh, the Giallo stuff that I picked up. Okay, so moving on now to this next pile here. Now, many of the movies in this pile came from a luminous eye, the guy I was telling you about from Mercari. And again, I don't remember exactly which ones were from him, but because I order from a lot of different people, it's hard to remember everything. But I do believe, if not many of them, most of them came from him. So first one here is from a, a defunct company from the U.S. called No Shame. And this one is part of the Sergio Martino collection called The Curse. I'm sorry, The Case of the Scorpion's Tale. Starring George Hilton. And he was in a lot of movies over the years. He was in westerns and stuff too. He was in some horror movies. And these, uh, these No Shame DVDs are pretty collectible. Just because they're... It's a defunct company. They went out of business years ago. And they were very high quality though. So this movie came out in 1971. It's unrated. 90 minutes running time. And it was released on DVD in 2005. It's pretty heavy. I believe it comes with a booklet. I have them in these uh, plastic sleeves just to protect them. But I think there's a booklet in here. And I think that's why it's so heavy. It was digitally remastered from the Vault Original 2P negative. The next one I, I never owned before. This is my first time owning this movie. It's called Plot of Fear. Directed by Paolo Cavara. And this is from Raro Video. Another company that put out high quality collectible movies. And this one is unrated. And I'm looking for a year. Okay, 1976 Italian, 102 minutes. It was released on DVD in 2012. What I like about the Raro video, if you guys ever notice, it'll tell you exactly on the back right there where it says contains one DVD. That way you'll know, if you're like me, you get a little bit funny if you get a movie that doesn't have what it's supposed to have for example if it if it was supposed to come with the booklet and you open it up and there's no book booklet in there it's it, it doesn't feel like it's a complete piece at least to me anyway uh, and some of these you'd never really know if it was issued with the booklet or not but this they will tell you right in the back if it does or not and I'll show you as we go on I have more and I'll show you what what I mean by that though so this one's called body puzzle it's a movie by Lamberto Bava. And if you look here in the back, it says contains a booklet and one DVD. So that way you know if you open it up and there's no booklet in there, your piece is not complete. Now this one, when I opened it up, there was no booklet in there and I thought I got kind of robbed. <laughs> but apparently it did not come with one, so. But this one does. And this movie came out in 1992. It's another Italian movie, 100 minutes running time. And it was released on DVD in 2011. The, these editions and uh, even the, the No Shame, they just have a different, higher quality feel to them. Like when you pick them up, they feel really sturdy and heavy. Um, they use a really nice thick case instead of those... Uh, like they have those uh, recycle cases now where it's just half the plastic and there's like pieces missing on the inside. And I, I don't like that. I like these where it's nice and thick and heavy and it just feels like it's, uh, it's built to last. The next one's called The Perfume of the Lady in Black. Starring Mimsy Farmer. She was always very pretty, very, very pretty lady. 
I like the blonde and blue eyes. They're very fetching to me. Uh, contains a booklet and one DVD. And it's 104 minutes running time. The movie came out in 1974. And it was released on DVD by Raro in uh, 2011. For a second there, I thought that was Lee Van Cleef. Let me... If it was Lee Van Cleef, they would have definitely had his name on the front. I don't know. I don't think that is him, but that looks like Lee Van Cleef to me. They don't have him listed in the in the first like four or five cast, so it's definitely not him. He would have been a, if not a headliner, he would be at least number two in the in the listing there. Next one's called Murder Obsession, another Raro video. Directed by Ricardo Frida. And this movie came out in 1981. You can watch it with English language or I, I, no, I take that back. You can only watch it with Italian language and English subtitles. It contains a booklet and a DVD. And I don't know if I said it was 95 minutes running time or not yet. It was released on DVD in 2011. There's some special features there. Next, this is a two disc edition of Mario Bava's Blood and Black Lace in widescreen. A fashion house of models turns into a terror house of murder. This one was put out by VCI. This is another company that puts out really good stuff. They're kind of an unsung hero. Nobody really ever talks about VCI, but they put out some really good stuff. This is uncut. It's widescreen. It's the European version from the Italian godfather of horror, Mario Bava. It was released in 1963. The, the genre, they're calling it horror sci-fi. And it is 90 minutes running time, unrated. Cameron Mitchell again. Hey, it's got commentary by my friend Tim Lucas here at the top. That guy is awesome. If you don't know who Tim Lucas is, he's uh, he's amazing. He used to be the uh, the chief editor of Video Watchdog, but it doesn't exist anymore. But he does a lot of he's kind of a hired gun now for a lot of these companies like Arrow and some of these other companies to do bonus materials for for pay. And he's he's great at what he does. And he's a Mario Bava expert. And as a matter of fact, he has written books, like big coffee table books about Bava. And some of the stuff that Tim Lucas has written has gone out of print and it's worth, uh, if you can find the Mario Bava book on eBay, you're going to have to pay at least 500 bucks or more for it. It's, uh, it's that good. It's that rare and it's that sought after that it's uh, it's that expensive. The next one's called All the Colors of the Dark. It's a film by Sergio Martino. Has another great cast. You got Susan Scott. You got George Hilton. That's a great cover too. This was put out by Shriek Show. I put this one in a, in a clear, thick case because it, this one came with one of those, um, what do they call it, like an eco-friendly case where some of the plastic on the inside is missing and it's like a, a very thin recycled material and I, I, I hate that crap. So I took it out, threw that crap in the recycle bin and I put it in a thicker case. I was out of the, the black cases. I have to order some more of those so I had to put it in one of these uh, clear cases. But eventually, I'll, I'll probably, when I do order the black cases, I'll take this back out and put it back into a black case. Uh, George Hilton starring. We talked about that already. It's a 91-minute running time. It's in uh, widescreen. And this movie came out in 1974, and I love these Shriek Show titles. These are really good. I think the next few are going to be Shriek Show now next handful maybe this one's called spasmo the giallo collection a 
classic giallo in the grand gory euro horror tradition from Umberto Lenzi. And let's see here, 94 minutes running time. It is unrated. And it was put out on DVD in 2002, but I'm not seeing the, the year of the movie. And I wouldn't even wager a guess because I'm not sure. But just kind of looking at the, the way that the actors are dressed and the vehicle here in this, that little screen grab and some of the, the imagery here, it feels like it's a late 60s, maybe early 70s for Spasmo. The next one is called My Dear Killer also from the Giallo collection. I don't know if these were a box set. I, I, I should have looked into it because it looks like these two, the one that I just showed you, they have that banner at the top that says the Giallo collection, and I don't know if these came together in a box set. I can always look it up, but if anybody knows, you wanna chime in below, you can go ahead and comment on that. So this is called a Giallo thriller, and it was released the movie came out in 1971, and it was released on DVD. If I can find a year, I'll let you know. I don't see it. But it was a, it's unrated, and again, it looks like it's some pretty good kind of a time machine piece. You can go back and live in 1971 for, what, an hour and a half or whatever it is. Not too many special features. My Dear Killer. Next one is called Lizard in a Woman's Skin Remastered. A Fulci movie. There's also a Shriek Show as well. 103 minutes running time, unrated. You can watch it with English or Italian audio. It's an anamorphic widescreen. And it looks like it was released on DVD in 2006, but I'm not seeing a year for when the movie came out. I'm gonna guess also in the 70s, like maybe the later the later middle, like 77 or so. It says, this is a new version of a lizard in woman's skin. It contains additional scenes and special features not previously available on the American DVD. So this is kind of like a little uh, collector's edition here. And here's another one from the Giallo collection. It's called, what have you done to Solange? Here's the Shriek Show label, logo, I should say. And this one was released by Shriek Show in 2002. It is in English language, it's unrated. And I'm, I'm thinking that this was again, either late 70s or early 80s for this one. Just gonna take a guess at that. What have you done to Solange? You have to tune in to find out what we did to Solange. Here is the sister of Ursula. From This is from Severin. They're calling it delightfully sleazy. Stephanie DeMario is high on our list of lusty ladies and uh, Bar Barbara Magnalifi is gorgeous. And this one was released on DVD in 2008. The movie's from 1978. It's an Italian language with optional English subtitles. Barbara Magnolfi was in uh, Suspiria. 
and Stefania De Mario was in a zombie, full cheese zombie. I need to, I can tell I need to change this case because it's very light. And you, I don't know, you maybe you won't be able to see it. But it has kind of a, uh, a warping effect. So you probably can't tell, but it, it kind of has like a dip in it. You can tell that the, the plastic is cheap and very thin. And I need to definitely put that one in a thicker case. The next one is called Body Parts. This is the widescreen collector's edition of it. Bought this one on eBay. It's still sealed. I, wait a minute, what did I do on this one? Okay, never mind. Yeah, this one's, it's sealed, but I still put a bag on it. That's what happened. And uh, the sticker is on the cellophane on the inside, not on the outside. So this uh, stars Jeff Fahey, Body Parts. And this one kind of plays out like, if you ever saw the Simpsons episode where Homer gets a hair transplant and they end up using, uh, what was that snake, I think his name is, right? The uh, Kind of like the, the criminal of Springfield in the Simpsons. Homer gets snake's hair transplanted onto his head and it turns him into a killer with uh, with like evil thoughts and, and violent thoughts. Well, it's very similar to the concept in this movie where um, Jeff Fahey's character loses his arm during the movie and they put a transplant of a, a former, I believe it was a serial killer or some kind of a, a criminal convict and it turns him into kind of this serial killer convict. It's a pretty cool concept, I guess, you know, I mean, it is what, I mean, it's, it's a pretty fun movie. It came out in 1991, it is rated R. I don't know if there's an unrated edition of this, but this is the rated R edition. And the last one for this pile is, this is a movie that I've owned on DVD years ago. And when I upgraded it to Blu-ray, which I still own the Blu-ray of this, I, I ended up selling my DVD for a lot of money back then. I mean, this at one point, this DVD was probably going for about 100 bucks, 90 to 100, somewhere in there. And I sold it for less than that, but it was still way more than I paid for it. And then when I upgraded the Blu-ray, uh, that's all I really needed. But I kind of wanted to go backward now and get this again. And it's nowhere near what it used to be. But I think, like I said before, I, I have a feeling these are going to be going up again. But anyway, this is the unrated DVD edition of it. And you can see it says unrated in the bottom corner. I, I know some people were arguing earlier saying that this was never released on DVD as the unrated. But it has. Yes, it has. Some people are just misinformed and they don't know what they're talking about. It, it's definitely the unrated edition of this one. But of course, everybody knows this movie. It's very over the top gory from Peter Jackson. It's a great movie. It's a it's more comedy than it is horror, but it's it's very it's a splatter flick for sure. Especially that that lawnmower scene near the very end of the movie. If you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. But uh, this is a fun movie to have, and I'm glad now that I own it on Blu-ray and I got the DVD again as well. So gonna pause it here i gotta wet my whistle a little bit i think i'm gonna take a break but you guys won't even notice my break because i'm gonna be right back at you here in a second okay we're making pretty good time so we're just gonna keep chugging along here so these the next piles here are kind of uh films that were in a franchise and some of these movies i've owned in the past and kind of traded them away when I upgraded. So I'm kind of recollecting the ones that I traded and then some I've never owned before. So the first one here is the original, the Amityville Horror from MGM. It comes with a booklet on the inside. Um, this is the widescreen version. I think it's a flipper disc. So on the back side, you get the standard and it's hour 59 minutes running time. I don't have to tell you guys anything about this movie. You know everything about it already. It's from 1979. It's a classic. And uh, it has that heavy feel again. I kind of like that. 
I got Amityville 2, The Possession. Obviously, it's the sequel. It's an hour and 44 minutes running time. It's another flipper disc, so you got widescreen on one side, you got full screen on the other side. Came out in 1982. Amityville 3D. All of these had the insert. This one came out in 1983, one hour, 33 minutes. Also a flipper disc. And I got part four, The Evil Escapes. And this was one I've never owned before. And I don't, I don't believe I've ever seen this movie starring Patty Duke. I haven't seen this movie, so I definitely have to check this one out. But this one came out in... Does it say 1989? I'm going to guess that came out in 1989. And then this DVD was released in 2003. Amityville 4, The Evil Escapes. So that's the little quadrilogy. I know that there are more to that. And I'll pick more of those up over time. I also... Some of these I own already on DVD. But I grabbed a... What was it? A 4... This was like a little four-piece lot that I got on eBay. And I have Anchor Bay's Phantasm, the original, I believe from 79, right? Is that one? 78. And let me see here. It was released on DVD in 2007. These are pretty fun movies. I, I like the Phantasm movies. And... Um, I have a different edition on DVD. I didn't own this one before, but I'm glad to have this one. I also have Phantasm 2, The Ball is Back. These were directed by Don Coscarelli. Rated R. Hour and 37 minutes running time. It was released on DVD in 2009. Hard to believe that's... Uh, you know, 15 years ago already, this was released on DVD. Time really goes by. Looks like this one came out in... I don't know if we're going to be able to see that. Looks like 88. First it looked like 86, but now that I'm looking through the phone here, it looks like 88. I got uh, Anchor Bay edition of Phantasm 3, Lord of the Dead. I have this one too, but I have the, the UK edition of it. So now I have the US release too. This one came out in 1993, 91 minutes running time. And it was released on 2007 on DVD. That's the Anchor Bay logo. They've gone through quite a few Anchor Bay logos over the course of time. And, of course, I got uh, Phantasm IV, Oblivion. I've never owned this one on DVD, but I do have it on Blu-ray several times. I have it in a couple of box sets, and then I also have this on a standalone edition of uh, Blu-ray, I believe it was from Wellgo USA. And this one was also put out by Anchor Bay. And let's see here. It, 90 minutes running time. It was released on DVD in 2008, and I believe the movie came out in 1998. There's the tall man, played by Angus Scrim. He was a very creepy actor. He was, a, from what I hear, he was really a really nice man. He used to go to a lot of uh, like horror cons, conventions, and he would sign for people. And uh, for everything I've heard about him was great. He was a really nice man, so. Rest in peace to him. And that was my little fan, uh, Phantasm Quadrilogy. So I'm going to pause it here now, put some of this stuff away, and then we'll get into the next pile. Okay, so this is kind of another miscellaneous DVD pile, and the same thing goes for this pile, too. Some of these I own already. Some of them I've never owned, and some of these are just different editions of movie I own already. But... 
This one I never did own. This is the Howling on DVD with that lenticular cover. I, I never owned this and I always wanted it. I, I never really thought much about it. I mean, I always wanted to get it. It was. It's not like it's hard to get. I just never thought about it. And then I was like, you know what? Let me grab that. But that is a really cool cover. It's a great effect of the werewolf coming through that uh, canvas. It's just the uh, the regular MGM DVD of the movie with a collectible slip cover. So I got that one. This one I never owned on DVD. This is the Howling 2, Your Sister's a Werewolf. This is getting a little bit harder to find now, and I think it's around like the $20 to $30 range, which is not incredibly expensive, but it's starting to get into that echelon where it's like, Ooh, we better grab it now because it's, this is only going to go up in price. All of these are. I'm just letting you guys know. DVDs are going to be worth a lot of money here coming up pretty soon. I also picked up the Toolbox Murders widescreen edition. I traded this case out too because the one that came with this one was just, it was garbage. It was the regular, uh, not the regular, it was the um, recyclable cover, the, the really thin, crappy quality case. I got rid of it, put it into this clear case, but I'm not, I'm not happy with this clear case. It's just in there for the time being. I'm going to go back to black once I order some of those. But this is the original Toby Hooper from... Uh, 2004. So this is actually, I guess, the remake because the original starred Cameron Mitchell. And this is the, yeah, this is the remake from 2004 by Toby Hooper. And then this is the Toolbox Murders 2. It comes with a slipcover. This is a, I believe this is a Scream Factory. There was a it looked like a, a Best Buy sticker. I didn't pull that off like that. But I don't have Goo Gone at the moment. I, I went through all of it, so I have to order more of that stuff too. And when I get it in, I'm going to take that Best Buy sticker off. I have it in a bag right now. So that sticker is actually on the slip cover. So I didn't want to do anything with it just yet until I have my Goo Gone. I don't want to possibly ruin it. So, um, yeah, this is the Scream, Scream Factory um, unrated DVD edition of this movie. I think I already have this one on Blu-ray. I'm pretty sure I do. But I wanted to get the DVD as well. Uh, these next two films are... They're kind of ridiculous, but they're fun. They're fun movies. They're kind of like... They remind me of Day of the Woman or uh, I Spit on Your Grave type of movie, only it's not exactly as offensive as... Uh, Day of the Woman, you know, I, I don't want to say why. There's certain words you can't say here on YouTube, and it starts with an R and ends in an ape. Um, it, it's not quite as bad in these movies, but it's similar to that where the, the women in these two movies are kind of wronged by hillbilly men, and they take their revenge on these men. And uh, they're very low budget, and uh, yeah, it's just, I mean, they're fun movies. They're not for everybody. I enjoy these kind of movies, but uh, this one stars the very gorgeous Claudia Jennings, who was a, at one point in her life, she was a Wisconsinite, the same state that I live in, but she ended up moving to California to pursue her dream of being a model slash actress, and she achieved both. Uh, she ended up dying a very tragic, horrible car accident death in California. And uh, I believe she was only like 31 years old. So she was right in her prime when she lost her life. But she was absolutely gorgeous. Look at all that red hair. It's, I mean, she's just a beauty. But anyway, I, I think I said the name. It's, this is Gator Bait, the director's special edition. Um, not much else to say about these. It's just a very low-budget revenge-type movie. And then part two, Gator Bait 2, Cajun Justice. This beautiful, long-legged actress has a... She has her own 
YouTube channel. And unfortunately, she recently suffered a stroke. And I'll, I'll link her channel down below. Only go over there if you're going to be respectful to her because she's having a really hard time in her life right now. So she, she suffered a stroke and she lost her ability to walk and to talk. And so she's going through therapy and she's relearning how to walk and relearning how to talk. And she has a long road ahead of her. Um, her name is Jan. In the movie it says, she goes by Jan McKenzie in the movie. But her YouTube channel is called Jan Sebastian. That same last name right there. So I will link her channel if you want to go over to her and see over to her page and see what she's been up to since she's acted. Uh, I know that she was a painter and she painted some beautiful portraits. You'll be able to see those on her channel. Um, I... I don't know else what else to say. Uh, I just, you know, I, she's gorgeous. I believe she's in her mid to late seventies now. So uh, it's it's a it's probably a hard it's a hard scenario to have to go through, especially if you're kind of getting up there in, in years to have to go through all that, you know. So I, I just I wish her the best. She doesn't watch my videos. She's not going to see this, but um, yeah, I, I really. I hate to see something like that happen to to people, you know. I, so I'm just going to keep moving because I don't know what else to say. But uh, yeah, I'll leave a link to her channel, Jan. I believe it's her channel is just called Jan Sebastian, but I'll try to find it again and link it down below. So if you want to check her out. So this last pile here, this one, this also came from Illuminous Eye, and I owned everything in this pile already, but I wanted it again, and I'll tell you why. So. These first two that I own, this is the Anchor Bay edition of Fulci's Zombie from the Lucio Fulci collection. This one is a, in a little bit better condition than the one I owned already, and it came with the insert. So this was kind of a small upgrade to the one I had already. Everybody knows this movie. I don't have to say much about it. I believe it was from 1979. Uh, Tisa Farrow starred in here and she recently passed away in the last year or so or less uh, she was Mia Farrow's sister and uh, yeah she recently passed away this one was put out on DVD in 2002 now this one also I own but this one's in way better condition than the, the one that I own and I'm glad to have this one so this one's kind of an upgrade for me this is the 25th anniversary special edition of Zombie 2. This one is hard to find complete these days because I'll show you. There's a lot of stuff that comes in this set. And the, the slip box that it, it comes with, it's very fragile and it, uh, it breaks apart over, over time. A lot of people that own this, and even if you take really good care of it, it just starts to get soft and fall apart. So that's what happened to mine. Uh, the one I have is not that bad. I'm pretty picky about my stuff, so most people will probably look at the one I have and say, oh, that's in really good condition, and it is, but this one's a little bit better, so I'm, I'm really picky about that kind of stuff. So this one, it's a two-disc set, so disc one is the DVD of the movie, and disc two are the special features. Nice little swing tray. And then it also comes with the poster, which a lot of the a lot of the secondhand twenty um, fifth anniversary editions don't have the poster because people put them up on their walls back in the day, and they just or whatever they threw them away and didn't re include them. It also comes with this booklet, which is also sometimes hard to find. So this one comes complete, has the uh, the chapter stops here. Also has a, hold on, let me pull that out. Has a, like a little order card, I believe, for some of the Shriek Show catalogs. Uh, let's see, Media Blasters. Uh, so, I don't know what this is. Uh, 
they're asking, oops, sorry about that. I'm here, I'm looking at, I was looking at it over the top of the camera and you guys were in blur mode. I apologize about that. Uh, I don't know, it's a uh, item number found on DVD spine. I don't know what this is. Maybe you can just order. Yeah, I think that's an order form. So you'd put the, I don't know, but the, I'm gonna pause it here so we can take the poster out and uh, I'll be right back. Okay, so it's a long, kind of a narrow poster. Almost kind of reminds me of the old locker posters we used to get back in the day. I remember <laughs> I had some Motley Crue uh, posters in my locker back in the day. They're kind of long and skinny, so it would fit inside the door. This one was signed up by somebody. I'm not sure who that is. I don't know if that's part of, I don't know if that's print. That almost looks like, no, that can't be Fulci's signature. Wait, what? That can't be. I think that's printed onto the poster. I'm going to have to look into that. Because when did Fulci pass away? When was this? Hold on a minute. That can't be Fulci's signature. I'm, I'm sure the Illuminous Eye would have told me, hey, I got this one signed, and he would have probably asked for way more than what I gave to him for it. So I'm not even going to look it up. I'm just going to assume that that is a fake signature, or not fake. It's probably his real signature, but it's printed on the paper. Not It's not an actual live signature. But it's pretty cool, though. I, I love that image of New York City in the background, all of these zombies coming across the bridge. And then that signature adds a little touch to it. It's almost like he, he kind of made it personal. I, I like that. And there's the Italian title, Zombie 2. And, and then it comes with this little booklet called uh, Flesh for the Beast. Special preview edition. You know what? I, I'm kind of having deja vu. I feel like I may have uh, opened this up and showed you guys within the past. Not this exact. This was new to me. This one is, is new. But I own this one already, like I said, and I, I feel like I opened this up before and talked about it on my channel. And I think I had the same kind of, uh, kind of feeling of flashback. Like I think I saw that Fulci signature on my other edition too. So now that I'm thinking about it, it, they probably came on every poster. It's just a print. So anyway, I'm going to pause it and put this stuff away and we're going to keep rolling. Okay, and for the record, and I know most of you know this by now, I'm sure there are at least a couple who have never heard the story I'm about to tell you, but these two movies, Zombie and Zombie 2, are the exact same movie. There is no Zombie 1. Or rather, there is a Zombie 1, but not really. And I'll explain. So, in 1978, George A. Romero came out with a movie called Dawn of the Dead. In the U.S., it was called Dawn of the Dead. In Italy, it was called Zombie. So, a couple of years later, when did this come out? I think we looked already. Was this also 79? So Dawn of the Dead was 78. I believe this came out in 79. So what happened was Fulci wanted to ride off. He wanted to piggyback off the success of Dawn of the Dead. And like I mentioned, in Italy, it was called Zombie. Dawn of the Dead was called Zombie. So Fulci made a sequel to Dawn of the Dead he wasn't given permission. He kind of took it upon himself to make that sequel. And he called it Zombie 2, which would have been the sequel to Zombie, which was Dawn of the Dead. I know it's a little confusing, but try to keep up. It's not that confusing. So in the U.S., 
I don't, I'm not sure about Europe, but in the U.S., this movie's called Zombie, and Dawn of the Dead was called Dawn of the Dead. But in Italy, Dawn of the Dead was called Zombie, Zombie 1, and then they came out with Zombie 2. But, and it's, it is confusing, and I don't know why they thought they could get away with it. They got away with it, but I mean, they, there was no punishment for them riding the coattails, but it's just a little bit confusing. So Zombie and Zombie 2 are the exact same movie. So if you, if you're trying to get the whole franchise and you think you're missing part one, you're not. It actually starts with Zombie 2, and that's about the best way I can explain it. If you're still confused, I, I don't know what, I, what else I can do for you. Uh, and these next three I own already in a box set from Shriek Show. But I, I wanted these standalone editions again. I just wanted to have these. I, I still have the box set, but I wanted to have these separate and so I can have this... Uh, nice little collection here i really love these movies so even some of the the later sequels that were kind of they were, well they were all low budget but um part four and part five were not the greatest but i still have fun with them but anyway here's zombie three part of the lucio fulci collection anamorphic widescreen i love these covers too these are great these are really really great this one came out in, uh, goodness, it doesn't say. It was released on DVD in 2002. It says, due to extreme violence, gore, horror, and sexual situations, viewer discretion is strongly advised. It's unrated. And then Zombie 4, After Death. This one was directed by Claudio Fragasso. And I believe the story behind this one, was it three or was it four? So by the time Fulci was, was making these sequels. Okay, so this one was released in 1988. I think by this time, by 1988, Fulci was getting very ill of can with cancer and he was... He was unable to do a lot of the stuff that he used to do for being a director. And he hired on Claudio Fragasso to kind of help him finish up the movie. And I can't remember if it was part three that he started that with. So Fulci either started this movie and didn't finish it and Fragasso did, or it was this one. Um, I, I would have to look it up again. But I, I know that Fragasso was a writer-director for this movie so maybe it was part four where um, Fulci got so ill he couldn't continue and then Fragasso stepped in and, and completed it. And then part five, a lot of people give this one uh, a lot of crap. And it, it, it is, I, this one has grown on me over the years. So it's called Killing Birds and these avian, they, they carry like this avian virus where it turns people into monsters and the birds are, are flesh hungry and bloodthirsty this one is uh let's see well how can this one come on 87 if part three came out in 88 that makes no sense but it says this one came out in 87 it can't be right though it's a film by claudio lantanzi and joe d'amato part five so fragasso got out by this time and uh, this one is not as bad as people say it is. It, it's kind of grown on me over the years. But this whole little this whole little franchise here, this little four film zombie franchise, I think it's really fun. I enjoy these. So I'm going to pause it here, and we have a couple more things to show you. I have two Blu-rays. I'm going to show you, and then I'm going to talk about the seven movies that I'm going to be giving away, and I'm going to show you guys a couple things that I'm thinking about for my 10,000 subscriber giveaway. So I'll be right back. Okay, so these last two are the only Blu-rays that I have in this update. And the first one was the, the monthly choice from the Disney Movie Club. This was their selection of the month. And if you didn't 
decline it within the allotted amount of time, they would automatically send it to you. So I, I wanted this one anyway, so I let them send it to me. And this is Disney's Wish, and it's the Blu-ray DVD digital code with that kind of the... Uh, that foil cover looks really good. Haven't watched this yet, but I, I wanted to have it. So I'm glad I have this one. I'm really gonna miss the uh, Disney Movie Club when they're gone. And then I got um, the Jaws 4K with the lenticular cover. And uh, I got a really good deal on this one. I think I paid 20 bucks for this. For 4K, that's pretty good and it's, I love that cover and it comes with the 4k release of the movie in a pretty thick book on the inside there so for 20 bucks that was a steal for me and those are the only two blu-rays i have in this update okay we're back and we're getting ready to close this video out just a couple more things to talk about uh so the reason why I decided to talk about this at the end of my video is because I want to reward the ones who have supported me and watched my videos and commented and watched them all the way through. So if I would have talked about this in the first five minutes of the video, people would have just tried to win free stuff and stopped watching. So this is for you guys who have always watched all the way through and supported the channel. So these are the movies I'm giving away. They're all gonna go to one winner. I'm just gonna quickly go through these and tell you what you're gonna have a chance to win. You get Torso, the uncensored English version. The Killing Hour. Nightmare City. And by the way, uh, um, all of these, most of these are, are sealed, but they're all in brand new like condition. This one's not sealed, but I have it in one of these little uh, protective sleeves. So, but it's in like brand new condition. This one's sealed. This one's still sealed. Here's Deep Red. I think this one's, that one's open, but it's, it has a plastic sleeve on it. Um, Black Belly of the Tarantula. It's open, but it's brand new. Like, Don't Torture a Duckling. It's still factory sealed. And A Blade in the Dark. It's open, but it's in brand new like condition. I'll show you what it looks like here. I mean, it's, it's as clean as a mirror. It's beautiful. They're all like that. I, I take really good care of my stuff. And besides, I wouldn't, I wouldn't give you guys a piece of crap for, uh, for a prize or a gift. What kind of sense would that make? So you get a chance to win these seven DVDs and all you have to do is um, be a subscriber and comment down below your three favorite releases from Blue Underground and put hashtag Blue Underground after your answer. If you don't Put hashtag blue underground. I won't be able to count your vote or your, your entry because that's what I'm going to be looking for. Um, so I, I want to say thank you. I want to give back to the community. So just tell me your three favorite movies that Blue Underground released and put hashtag blue underground and that will be your entry. And in about two weeks approximately give or take two weeks from now i will pull a winner and i'll ship these off to you it's open worldwide uh, i want to make sure that my my friends and viewers across the uh the waters they have a chance to win this one too i was looking at my my uh, youtube analytics and most of my views come from the u.s like 60 percent of my views come from the u.s and the the second amount of viewers, I think it's like 20 something percent comes from Europe, from uh, England. So I really wanna thank you guys for that too. And I think my third was was Canada, it was just under 10%. And then there was a couple others that, that rounded out to 100, but 
um, <clears throat> so yeah, that's all that that's all you have to do to win these. You know, just put the your top three your top three favorite movies or your top three favorite releases from Blue Underground, and hashtag Blue Underground. If you have a Blue Underground collection and you want to make a video in response to this, I'll give you an extra entry into the contest. Just um, if you do make a video, comment down below so I can go check it out. So I'm going to pause it here. It's a very easy contest. I mean, this is probably, you know, let's see. I, this is probably $75 worth of movies for free. But I I, I just want to give back to you guys for, for always having my back. So I'm going to pause it here. And then we'll talk about my 10,000 subscriber contest. Okay, and I'm not going to take up too much more of your time here. I'm just going to kind of show you guys some of the prizes I have for the 10,000 subscriber contest. And I'm going to kind of pick your brain a little bit. So the way that I have it now is these are the prizes. I have enough prizes for the first three winners. I'm not sure if I'm going to do a top three or a top five. But these are the choices you have. This is the sold out Conan Chronicles. You get Conan the Barbarian and Conan the Destroyer 4K box set, still sealed. This thing's going for about 80 to 90 bucks. Um, it's sold out, so that's going to be one prize. The second one is The Year of the Villain. This is a Joker graded comic book signed by John Carpenter. It's graded as a 9.8, and this was a comic book that was... The story is by John Carpenter, and he signed it on November 11th of 2019. This thing's going for about 300 bucks right now in this condition that it's in. It's a it's a 9.8 mint with a John Carpenter's signature right there. So that will be one prize. And then the third prize, or actually, these aren't a one, two, and three. It'll be a winner gets to pick his, his or her choice. So the, the last one so far is it's, you're going to have a chance to win these two records. This one's sold out. This is the three-disc Dawn of the Dead record set. This thing's going for about eh, anywhere from 70 to 80 bucks. And then Trick or Treat. These are both sealed. These are both from Waxwork Records. These will be together as one prize. So this is one prize. This is one prize. This is one prize. I'm thinking about getting two more and have a top five. But I need some ideas from you guys. What do you think? How, how should I run this contest? Um, my favorite contests are the ones that people have to submit a video for and you have to be a subscriber. Those are my two favorite ways because I love to watch other people's videos and I love to hear their thoughts on things. So um, leave me a comment to give me some ideas and of some questions I can ask or, or stuff like that. So um, other than that, I appreciate you guys watching. Hope you're having a great weekend. Warmer weather's coming. Summer's on its way. And I'm just going to end it here, guys. Thank you for watching and take care, and I'll see you next time. Bye.